charge on. We commit to do extraordinary things. It's a catalyst for action. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us at the Research Recovery Rescaling webinar. I'm Susan Vernon Devlin, Manager of Communications and Marketing at UCF Rosen College of Hospitality Management. I will be your moderator for today's webinar. First, a bit of housekeeping. Attendees, we will not be using the chat feature or the raise your hand feature for the webinar. We will only use the question and answer feature please place all questions and comments there. We will respond to your questions at the end of the presentation. However, feel free to type your questions into the Q&A feature as you think of them throughout the webinar. If your question is the same or similar to another question that is asked, we will respond once. If we don't get to your particular question during the webinar, rest assured we will respond to you via email after the webinar. And now, without further ado, I would like to introduce Dr. Yu Cheng Wang, Dean of Rosen College of Hospitality Management, to get our webinar started and introduce our presenters. Dr. Wang. Uh, thank you, Susan, very much. Good morning, all. Greetings from UCF Rosen College of Hospitality Management. So right now it is 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, June the 10th, 2020. And uh, thank you all for joining us today again for the third industry webinar focusing on the impact of COVID-19 on travel intention based on empirical data and the empirical study conducted at the Rosen College. Uh, these webinars uh, are designed to help the hospitality and tourism industry retool for the changes we are anticipating as our industry emerges from the effects of the COVID-19 virus. Again, my name is Dr. Yu Chen Wang, and I'm Dean of the UCF Rosen College of Hospitality Management. Uh, one of the core tenets of university is the development of new knowledge through research. And that is exactly what the faculty at the UCF Rosen College uh, are doing on a daily basis. Um, so again, research starts with a question. Uh, if um, participants today or your organizations have a question, we can help you find an answer. Uh, later in the presentation, we will share information about how to start this uh, collaborative process. So, and now, I would like to invite my colleagues, uh, Dr. Tico Cross and Dr. Manuel Rivera to begin their uh, presentation. As Susan mentioned, should you have any questions for the, pres for the presenters today, please use the uh, Zoom question platform and uh, submit the questions there. And Susan, our moderator, will deliver the questions to the presenters on your behalf. So thank you again, and please enjoy. Charge on. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Robert Tico Crows. I'm the Associate Dean for Research at Rosen College at UCF, and also the Director of the Dick Pope Senior Institute for Tourism Studies. Um, together with my uh, colleague, Manuel Rivera, we're going to present the results of a study that a team of researchers did during the past um, three to four weeks. The topic of today is travel intentions during COVID-19. <clears throat> one of the basic questions that anyone have after this pandemic is how to balance, you know, the the challenges or the pains of what the virus has caused um, in terms of our health, in terms of 
disruption in the community and the families with the economy, the reopening of the economy, where jobs are, are at stakes, profits are at stakes, um, uh, communities are at stakes. So that balance right now, that's, that's a very important question that many of us are struggling with. However, even if we start seeing reopening programs and reopening activities in multiple um, states and cities across the country and in the world, there is still the main question that really we should ponder about, which is, will customers come back? Will the pandemic has had an impact on our customers that it has instilled fear that maybe prevents them from coming back and patronize our hospitality industry, visiting our attractions, um, hotels, flying, uh, uh, um, visiting destinations, and so on. That is the main question that we think are at this moment that um, everybody is pondering about. So based on that question, a team of researchers um, decided to look into how customers or how U.S. travelers are perceiving their travel intention in the next um, 12 months. Actually, we, des we designed a survey about um, during the first week of, of May. Um, I would like to thank at this moment uh, Dr. Jorge Rederstadt and Dr. Xiao Xiao Fu who designed the survey and also our PhD student, uh, Steve Smith, who will also assist in the research process. We administered this survey in the last two weeks of May um, through Qualtrics. We bought a panel at Qualtrics. And um, the sample consisted of all US travelers um, across the country. We completed at the end of May, 1980 surveys. And one of the main questions in the survey was whether people will travel, would travel in the next 12 months, yes or no. And in the um, graph, uh, you can see that less than one third of the respondents said that they have any travel desire to travel in the next 12 months um, in the country. And it is very important at this moment to contextualize what it means in, in terms of one third of the US travelers um, have a travel desire. If um, we look at the US census in 2019, the US consisted of 83 and a half million families. We know that each year about 35% of American families uh, plan vacations 50 miles or more from home. Each family or the typical family in, in the United States consists of 3.14 persons in 2019. So if we take what we found, which means that 32% of our respondents have any travel desire in the next 12 months, it means that less or fewer than 30 million people in the United States would like or has any intention to travel during the next 12 months, which compared to 2019, where we um, see numbers of um, 92 million people. So fewer than 30 million people um, plan to travel in the next 12 months. And it is important right now to have an idea where our respondents are coming from. So if we look at the, um, the places where they're coming from, in our sample, we can see basically they're coming from across the country and where five states really um, um, are prominent in our, um, among our respondents, which are California, New York, Florida, Texas, and Pennsylvania. So again, we, um, we got 1,980 respondents from across the, across the country and from all the states within the country, five states um, are, are, had the most amount of respondents, which 
um, are um, California, New York, Florida, Texas, and Pennsylvania. Let's look at the respondent demographic. Who are these uh, respondents? What we can see here is more than half of our respondents are married. Um, we have about 40% of those respondents earn less than $50,000 and over 40% earn more than $75,000. There is a, a more than half have an education higher than high school. And again, more than half um, at this moment or at the moment of the survey had a job. So um, again, the questions with, with regard to jobs, we look at whether you're um, a home person, whether you're unemployed, whether you're retired, you're a student or currently um, employed. We can see that the numbers at the time that we did the, the survey, there was quite a high amount of people who were unemployed. The important thing that now that we have an idea about where they're coming from and a little bit about who they are, their demographic, demographic profile, it is important to see what their travel intentions are in terms of their generation, in terms of their age. Um, we see here that most of the three generations, Boomer, Gen X, and Gen Y, wants to travel very, very quickly. So there seems to be a kind of a pent up demand um, close to, or more than four out of 10 wants to travel within um, the next uh, three months. And if we add everything together, it's more than eight out of 10 wants to travel in the first nine months. So there is this pent up demand um, within this group of people who wants to travel, which is what we said at the beginning, there were fewer than um, 29 or 30 million people who wants to travel. Um, it is also important to know how they want to travel. Do they want to travel alone or do they want to travel in group? And again, what we see here that um, about one out of three uh, um, would like to travel with friends and we see more than four out of 10 wants to travel alone. So uh, basically we have a very large group that uh, wants to travel by themselves in, um, during this time. But again, it, it, it um, aligns and corresponds with this pent up demand that we um, discussed before. What we did next is we looked at how we can group these, um, this group of uh, this, the, the, the respondents who wants to travel. And we came up with, we identified four groups. And the way we identify those four groups is that we use two dimensions in the survey or from the survey, which gave us an idea of how to um, put these um, four groups together. One of the statements that we looked at was a place near my home is attractive in my decision to travel within the next 12 months. And we look at the agreement with yes or no and then scale one to five. And also we consider the, um, the density of corona cases. So we look at the statement, whether you agree or not with the statement on a scale of one to five, I will consider only destinations with small numbers of coronavirus infections in my decision to travel in the next 12 months. Based on these two dimensions, we created these four groups. Um, the first one is the cautious hopper. That is the person or the traveler who is very cautious, wants to travel uh, short distances and also where um, the density of corona cases is, is low. Then we have the daring excursionist. Uh, that's the, um, the traveler who um, wants to travel close to home, but doesn't care that much or seems not to care that much about the density of cases. Then we have the wary voyager that is the person or traveler who wants to um, travel further from home, long haul, but are wary about uh, the density of cases. And then we have the daredevils who actually wants to travel, doesn't care how far or doesn't care about the density of um, the cases. So um, the next questions that we had when we looked at these groups is first we want to determine how big is each one of these groups. So we discover that those who are cautious, for example, if we take the cautious hopper, it represents 40% of our respondents, which is a very 
large group. And then we looked at the very Voyager, who is again, once is careful in terms of the cases of coronavirus, but doesn't care that much about the distance. We are talking here close to 60% um, of, of the um, travelers wants to travel closer to home. And then we have 27% um, um, of our respondents really are risk averse. Basically, they don't, I mean, they don't care about risk, um, um, quite frankly, and they don't care how far they have to travel. So these are the four groups that in, in the next slides we're going to um, share with you in terms of how quick they want to travel, in terms of um, their intention to travel, the mode of transportation, and the factors that will influence their decision. What is interesting from this slide is that we see that both the cautious hopper and the daredevils are, and, and the daring excursionists are the ones that really wants to travel very, very quickly in the first three months. I mean, very close to half of them wants to travel during that time. And then we see that it, it evolves that within the first nine months, basically everybody has traveled um, during the first nine months um, of, uh, of, um, of the year, of the next year, which again gives an idea about this urge, this pent of demand that exists um, among these, um, these travelers. Let's see how they want to travel. Um, we have seen that there is quite a group, large group, six, six out of 10 who wants to travel close to home. And what we see here is that the overwhelming majority of our respondents in the first three months, they want to travel by car. So that's very important, um, which, which gives an intention about um, what is the mode of transportation and what kind of cause they are foreseeing in terms of, of their traveling. So we see that their devils close to half wants to travel within the first three months. The daring excursion is more than half. Then we see the cautious hopper, um, almost uh, half wants to travel during um, the first um, three months. That's using their own car. Let's look at <clears throat> in terms of how they perceive traveling by plane. Here we see that the numbers start dropping. Um, only one out of three wants to travel by plane. And the, um, the group with the, with the likelihood to travel the least by plane is the wary voyager. That is, again, just to um, remind you, that is the traveler who wants to travel further from home. So it doesn't matter in terms of the distance, but are more wary about density of cases where they would go. And um, um, the next one that we can see here that um, um, the mode of transportation that they want to, to travel with is by train. And here we can see again that the numbers drop significantly, significantly at the beginning during the first three months, but they increase over the next three months. So there is a tendency to um, uh, um, use the train more <clears throat> as time passes. This is, um, I think, logical because in train, um, probably people um, might have some, some weariness to travel in train because they don't know um, how social distances will play out <clears throat> in that particular mode of transportation. Now let's look at the factors that influence um, the travel intention of our, of our travelers. Again, to repeat, we said that fewer than 30 million people or travelers have the intention to travel during the next 12 months. So where do, you, where do they want to go? Well, on a scale of one to five, we can see clearly here <clears throat> that the cautious hopper is very much um, into you know, traveling to places where you have fewer cases of coronavirus and they are very stable over time, as we can see here. The same thing with the daredevils, they don't care that much in terms of um, the density of the risk. So they have the lowest, actually below um, 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 the average, and um, it seems very, very um, stable. The other two, we can see some dent at the, at, at, in, in the next three months, so from between three and nine, 
And then we see a very uh, interesting behavior where the wary voyager over time will increase its wariness while the daring excursionist will lower <clears throat> its concern with regard to the risk. In terms of um, hotels, for example, where they want to stay in the accommodations, we can see here more or less the same pattern where um, at the beginning um, people would like to stay at hotels uh, with limited gas, particularly the, the cautious hopper. It is a similar um, pattern. The weary voyager and at what the bottom we see again those the other two um, segments which um, have less um, fear in terms of the risk. However, we see that over time, <clears throat> the daring excursionist tends to have um, uh, more risk averse um, behavior or, uh, or perception over time, which is very important to um, take into account. A, a similar pattern we can see with, with attractions. So again, the, um, the, the hopper, the cautious hopper is at the top, having this um, fear for density of people. And at the lower end, we have the deer devils. It is more or less the same pattern that, that we have seen with destinations, hotels, and attractions, where we have very clear four patterns of behavior with regard to the limited amount of people that they would like to see when they um, visit either a destination, stay at a hotel, <clears throat> or visit an attraction. Let's look at how sensitive they are in terms of prices. Um, gas prices. Remember, we said at the beginning that car would be the most preferred is a uh, is a preferred mode of of transportation um, for the um, for the four uh, um, segments. But what is important is in terms of <clears throat> price elasticity, we see that the cautious hopper is more price or seems to be more price sensitive compared um, to the daredevils. So um, it is important to take that into account uh, <clears throat> when we think in terms of how can we attract this group. Similar um, um, price sensitivity we can see with regards to traveling by plane, airfare tickets, the same thing happens. What is interesting here is though that the three other um, segments um, which are the wary voyager, the daring excursionist, and the daredevils, we see that they are less sensitive, price sensitive over time with regards to traveling by plane, which is very different than what we see here or seems different in terms of the price sensitivity of the um, cautious hopper. A similar um, pattern we see with hotel prices. Again, the cautious hopper is the most, seems to be the most price sensitive in, in um, among these uh, four groups. And um, we see over time that the daredevils seems to increase in terms of its sensitivity of, of hotel price, while the other two seems to have uh, less, less sensitivity to hotel prices. Finally, we look at the state of the economy, how the state of the economy would play out in terms of uh, influences the perception of, of travel intention. So whether we, we, we read in the papers, we listen to the radio or watch TV news and so talk shows, we can see that <clears throat> for the cautious hopper seems to be the most conservative and it seems to be the most sensitive to the state of the economy. So any information with regard to that is important to them. Um, while the um, other three, um, what we see is that dairy excursionist seems uh, less sensitive to the state of the economy. Then finally, we have looked at two other important aspects is what is the impact of, of past experience? What seems to play out here is that past experience um, um, seems to play an important role in, in, in terms of the travel intention. We ask them here whether they will consider the same place that they visited last year. And we can see here that in general, they are um, clustered together, the three. So the cautious hopper, the wary, wary voyager, and the um, daring excursionist seems to um, think more about their past experience at the beginning. 
but all three would accept to the cautious of Hopper, again, who seems to be the most conservative of the group. Um, all of them seems um, less sensitive to their past experience. And then finally, with regard to cleanliness, it seems <clears throat> that if you think in terms of attracting these groups, um, there seems to be a, a high awareness of cleanliness. Um, again, very much pronounced in, um, in the group of the cautious hopper. But over time, we can see very clearly that there is this trend, um, increasing trend, where people, where travelers become more and more sensitive with regard to the cleanliness, which means, you know, social distancing, mask, gloves, and, 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 and sanitizing, um, using um, hand sanitizer and, and so on. So when you, when you look into, in, in wrapping up, when you look at the, <clears throat> these four groups, you can see very clearly there is kind of a pent up demand, but among these four groups, there is a different type of intention or behavior. And the factors that we looked at have a different impact on, on them. Um, the overwhelming majority more than half wants to travel closer to home. They would like to use their own car to do that. Um, they are price sensitive, especially at the beginning. Um, they are also very wary of the, the state of the economy and um, cleanliness seems to be a very important aspect to take into account. So I would like to thank you um, very much. And I, I would like also to thank the team of researchers that helped us put this together in terms of designing the survey and making the analysis, um, helping us with the analysis. And um, we are ready right now for questions um, from the audience. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Crows. And thank you, Dr. Met Rivera for putting that presentation together. Okay, so now we are moving on to our questions. Um, our first question is asking about accessing the potential survey responders. Uh, what, how many people did you initially invite versus who actually responded? We, we, we invited um, 1980 uh, um, respondents. And then we asked them whether they want to travel in the next 12 months. Only 630 of those uh, who responded uh, um, that they will travel the next month, we will um, continue um, with the survey. But we kept those who said no, because it's very important to have an idea about, you know, how many from the total sample uh, would like uh, have has the intention to travel, so that's why we came with this this um, figure of thirty one point eight percent of the nineteen um, eighty uh, respondents who who wants or has the intention to travel, and I think that's very important because um, it clearly gives an idea about how many people and and, and I gave I, I contextualize or we contextualize that number in order to have an idea about the risk. In, in, in 2019, we had 29 million families who travel, uh, consisting of nearly 92 million people. So if you take that 31.8%, we are talking about 9.3 million families who are intending to travel right now, which, um, which uh, equals to uh, fewer than 30 million people. So. The hospitality industry has to think about um, only 30, 30 million people or fewer than 30 million people has the intention to travel during the next um, 12 months. And <clears throat> these are very important because more than half of these people are very cautious people. So they want to travel close, um, close to their home, more than 50 miles, but close to their home. And they want to travel, uh, close to half wants to travel to places which have a, a, a fewer density, a, a low density of, of corona um, cases. And they are very much into, you know, the cleanliness um, of that place, meaning, you know, you have to provide information about the health precautions that you're taking either at the attraction or your hotel or your plane, et cetera, or in the train. That's very important. Thank you, Dr. Crows. 
Um, we have another question. Uh, where did they, where did you find the individuals that you sent the survey to? Who were these people that were surveyed? The night we, we bought a panel from Qualtrics and the, um, with the request to provide us with a representative sample of the country, across the country. So as you can see, one of, um, I mean, one of our uh, previous slides, we show where the people were coming from, where all the respondents were coming from. So they're coming, uh, the respondents are across the country with five prominent um, um, places, which were um, California, New York, Pennsylvania, Florida, and the other one I, I, I can't remember right now. But there were four prominent places across the country. But the respondents were across the country, even from Hawaii and, and, and one of the islands in, in the Pacific. Okay. Um, you, you basically just answered part of a question that was asked, um, which is where do people want to go most and why do you think that is? Um, we found that the three preferred states, one of the, the question that we asked was not in terms of cities or attractions, but we asked them uh, among the 50 states, which were the three preferred states that they want to visit. What we found was in sequence, Florida is number one, California number two, and Hawaii number three. Okay. And the first two, you know, it's... Um, um, this is guess. We don't know exactly why at this moment because we're still um, delving into coming through um, the um, the data. But I guess that uh, both are very well known um, places, uh, tourist places. They have, uh, for example, Florida is the capital of the theme parks in the world, special Central Florida and Orlando. Then we have something similar in California. Uh, Hawaii is also um, a beach. Um, 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 destination so a lot of people go there so um these are three prominent places in general in within the country mm -hmm. we understand that these are initial findings uh dr crows uh what do you think these findings mean for orlando as a destination which was hit very hard by the coronavirus well i think that orlando has to think in terms of the the, the amount of people who wants to travel remember instead of over 90 million, only 30 million. So the competition will be very fierce for these fewer than 30 million people. These 30 million people have very clear um, um, intentions in terms of, for example, where they want to travel, how far, uh, density of cases, uh, the cleanliness, so information about health is important. Uh, they are very sensitive, uh, some of them, with regards to um, the state of the economy, especially those who want to travel closer to home. So Orlando, if Orlando uh, is marketing closer to home, uh, they have to think in terms of these um, important factors that can affect um, um, the volume of customers coming to Orlando and the same thing for the attractions and, 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 and hotels. So I would say that providing marketing information with very precise information in terms of cleanliness, <clears throat> is important health, but also making sure that we provide uh, um, precise information with regard to the state of the economy. Uh, uh, I would like to add to the uh, to the comments that when we look at the data, uh, we've seen that uh, people want to travel within uh, a large numbers of people want to travel within the first three months, and and that's an important it means that there's an, an intention and a desire to do so. But when we look over time, what we see that it seems that the travelers are, are making a balance between what are the things that are important for them in terms not only price, uh, the density of the destination, the visits, and also the density of the places where visits. So in terms of uh, implications uh, for the recovery, we have to take uh, into consideration that some the, over time, people are uh, waiting perhaps that the time will fade the virus for their intention so uh, in compared to the immediacy so this create a, an important need for for information to be uh, disseminated to your consumers uh, you know about 
what is the, the, the number of properties that are uh, guests that are in your property, the safety precautions that you're taking at your property. And then also that's for the hoteliers. From a destination's perspective, then all these synergies have to be together and communicating a message that allow them to choose those areas that perhaps in the past uh, have less, uh, less traffic and might provide uh, an, an experience that allow for that social distancing since the, the desire is already there. So right now that the consumer seems to be juggling a decision of, uh, of the risk and time in which they will uh, take the, their vacation, but it seems that the majority of them based on the results over 46, 48%. In terms of air immediate. travel, um, do you know, based on your survey, how far from home respondents were willing to travel? Not really. We asked closer to home or, or <clears throat> further away from home. We had a number of questions. The, the daredevils, which is about uh, a group, which is about one out of four, they don't care where they, they want. To, they can travel further away. They can go to Europe or anywhere or the Caribbean or South America. So they don't care that much. So, but the, 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 the six out of 10 of the people that we spoke about of the fewer than 30 million people, the 29 million people, they want to travel closer to home. So that is, so it means that if you're a destination, you should market it very close to home within, you know, within 100 miles, for example. You mentioned uh, traveling overseas to the Caribbean. Um, was that included nearby destinations or any read on that? And what about cruises? This, this, uh, Part of the research was uh, focused, uh, did focus only on the, on the United States, traveling within the United States. So we have information about other places outside of the United States, but this particular uh, webinar is only about traveling within the States. And in the cruise, um, people, I mean, the cruise turned out to be very, very low, almost non existing. Okay. I uh, have a question from Blake. He wants to know, did any of the respondents get to provide a reason for saying no to traveling within the next few months? No, we didn't ask that. Once you, once you said no, we park you as a no traveler. We didn't ask you, and maybe that's one of the limitations of this particular study at this moment. We should understand better why they, want, they don't want to travel. The guess is because of the, the virus. You know, um, um, but that's more a guess than so something that we know at this moment. Okay. Um, economically speaking, you touched on that briefly uh, as a factor. Do you see that continuing to be a factor going forward? Yes, I mean, the, the state of the economy is very important, especially for the conservative um, traveler. I mean, we, we said, for example, with the cautious hopper, which is one, which is the largest group uh, among um, the four, the state of the economy plays a very important role. So it means that we need to provide information about the state of the economy and, and try to be, I mean, be honest with the information, but try to, um, provide enough, so don't, don't overlook uh, um, information about the economy that you have to provide. For example, I can imagine that Santa Florida, uh, where we live right now, can provide, uh, um, you know, job numbers, how the job numbers are increasing, for example. Uh, businesses that are opening up, uh, th th this type of information is very important uh, for these type of, of, of travelers. Okay, this is a very, very new survey, and thank you for this data. Um, how frequently will you conduct this study? Will you update it as we're going forward into the future as things change and, and more things open up? Yes, we, we plan to, to update uh, and tweak the survey in the future, so if, uh, in the next three months, in order to have an idea about, you know, the, um, the differences in time, whether there, there has been a change compared to how they perceive their um, their travel intention at the end of May, for example, compared in August, where we will have um, you know some some more certainty in terms of how the economy is going, how the reopening plans are doing, uh, the activities, how how people uh, are mitigating um, the spread of the coronavirus, and so on. So 
um, um, sure, that is a very important aspect of this program. Okay. Um, someone's asking if you can share the demographics by segment. That may be a little too deep a question to ask right now, um, but can you share that? <laughs> in, in a well, well we, we, yes, but we, we don't have it on the slide. I mean, we don't have it on the slide right now. The only thing that we have right now is that in terms of their volume. So we know that the, the first one, the, um, the cautious hopper is the largest group followed by, I think the daredevils is the other one. So you have two extreme, you have this one of, out of four, which for me was a surprise that there is this group that, I mean, the profile of these people, they really don't care where, about the coronavirus. You know, they, they, they want to travel. These are really travelers. They, 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 they have this urge. While we have seen there is this pent up demand among the, the segments, but this group doesn't care that much about whether the place has a very um, large density of corona um, cases. Okay. Um, in, in, in answering that question also, there's one more question about preference of travel. Are, are, are the respondents saying they want to go to less dense populated places or more dense populated places or really does it matter and is it based on the timeline of how far out we go from this pandemic? In general, people prefer, it seems that they prefer less uh, dense um, 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 places, uh, meaning that they, they care, except the, the, um, the, um, the, the daredevils that we said, that, that segment. But in general, it seems that the majority wants places where you have fewer people or limited amount of people. So which means that the information is about, you know, social distancing is very, very important. Thank you, Dr. Crows. Um, let me just see if we have any more questions that we can answer right this second, because we are down to our last minute now. In, in doing this survey, um, do you think that some of your respondents are thinking more of international travel or is it primarily domestic? No, we asked them very specifically about domestic travel in, the, in this particular survey. So they had to uh, um, choose among the 50 states of the country. So there was no international question in this particular survey. All right, well, thank you, Dr. Crows. That is all the time we have for questions today during our Research Recovery and Rescaling webinar. To, to learn more about this webinar series, you can visit the Dick Pope website and you'll see that on your screen right now, the URL for the webpage that has the research recovery and rescaling webinars that we have completed thus far. This is our third and the videos from the previous webinars are also located on that page so you can go and rewatch them and take a look at the demographics and the data that was presented as it is there to assist our hospitality, tourism and travel industry in planning as they go forward with coronavirus still within the environment. I'd like to thank you all for joining us once again and have a wonderful day. Thank you.